Hello people, welcome to Life Matters, Anua Dediri. Thank you very much for your consistent and continuous love and support for this brand. I love and appreciate every one of you. If this is your first time, Life Matters, Anua Dediri is a radio show that still that hairs every Wednesday. Yes, every Wednesday, 6 p.m. Nigerian time, 11 a.m. Alberta time. And it has always been an amazing one. Last week we had Yvonne May. And for those that just joining us, I would also say a happy new month to you. Last month, the last um Wednesday of the month, we had Yvonne May and it was an amazing show. She poured our heart to us last week. Oh my God. I had, like I was close to tears, but like her herself was not crying. So I had to like chill. <laughs> It was it was that amazing and I thank God for our life. I think I thank God for allowing her share the story with us. It was an amazing story. You know, going through all the pain, going through everything that she had been through and coming out to say, you know what? I actually am a stronger, I'm a wiser, I'm a better woman. And it was it was it was amazing. She lost her husband. Um Mm, it was it was too much to handle for for me personally i feel like it was one thing that i needed to be strong to be able to understand that story and it was one amazing story yes um today for those that are just joining me we're talking about the essence of fatherhood yes the essence of fatherhood and what is fatherhood to you like what do you understand as fatherhood what is would you say you want to marry a man like your father or would, would you say that you want to be like your father yes you have our heavenly father who is the lord our god our maker our, an awesome being as we call him that has always been there for us but let's come down to earth and say that do we really have men that like fathers because last month i remember that when we had the father's day segment when we had the father's day segment um on the night show we had to ask ourselves do we really have fathers out there are there people that actually are fathers in the real sense of it what's the essence why why didn't God just say, okay, because the man was not responsible in making sure that um, Eve did the right thing. Let's, let's eradicate men and have just women in the world. But no, God's love for us was more than that. And he's a good, good, good father. He's a father that you can never underestimate. He's a father that really loves us. He's a father that's always been there for us. If not for God, where would we have been in the real sense of it? If you not be God, where, where we for be? Like they were saying, broken. Where would we be? So if you're, if you're just joining us, welcome to Life Matters with Anwar Dediri. My name, as you know, is Anwar Dediri. And I'm always excited and I always love when I see all my amazing and wonderful people. Yes, we're doing it outside today because the weather is pretty. I pray it doesn't rain. <laughs> I pray it doesn't rain. But if it does, well, we're going to enjoy We're going to enjoy it either way. Yes, we're going to enjoy this weather either way. So for today, I have an amazing guest. Like we're talking about the essence of fatherhood. And I was saying that God is our father. He loves us. He's someone that's always been there for us. God has been the most amazing father, father to the fatherless, husband to the widow. And when I look at it and I sit down and I look at these things, I say, if God has been an amazing father, so is it that we have more men that don't understand the meaning or the... Um, what they call it, the meaning and the essence of what fatherhood should look like. Do we understand? Like, me and, me and my friend always say this. We always have a lot of conferences on women, how men can be better wives, better daughters, better this, better that. But when do we have conferences that take care of what men should do? You know, when do we ever talk about men being better versions of themselves and not just that, oh, um, just provide for the family, come home, eat, sleep, and that is it. You know, a lot of men have that mentality. My mother did this for my father, so my, my wife has to do all this for me. And I'm like, well, yes, your mother did all that for your father, but in this day and age that we are having women now doing a lot of work, my people, are we like, you, you will not lie to me. Yes, the women in the olden days used to do a lot of work with their families. Like go to the farm, get the this, get the that. Yes, in the olden days, we had all that. Women used to work in the farm and they were always in the kitchen. 
hi people how we doing we used to have all that but in the real sense of it the millennial woman now is doing the nine to five like the man is doing the nine to five she's making sure that everything too is in place in the home just like how the man is providing money in the home she's making sure that oh this my children have food my children have money to eat my children have this it's the same way so like um Reverend Kingsley Konko said, he said, when your wife, when your husband is bringing, is the breadwinner. If the man is bringing bread, you bring the akara so that the house will be full. And it's the truth. But we see a lot of men that allow their wives to either both provide the bread and the akara and just sit down at home. We now have stay-at-home dads that don't work, don't do anything, and they just expect the wives to bring it. And we have stay-at-home moms too, which is not a bad thing. Like, it, it depends on the understanding. I particularly have heard of a story where it's a stay-at-home dad, the wife earns a very, very huge amount of money, and... um and what they call it and they, that's the agreement the agreement is that the wife will be working while the man will take care of everything in the house yeah so men will say that no the man is to work but what's your take on things like that so yes we're talking about and discussing that with my guests today you know that normally i always bring you great tunes every week and i'm telling you every week i always bring you great tunes and it is so amazing that we have had tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of amazing amazing um art our uh, artists how, how do we use them yeah artists that um i've done quite a great number of songs you know quite a great number of songs and i want to actually bring them in oh my even my guess is even around today i really really want to discuss this this topic it's very it's one very important topic to me um Another thing I wanted to discuss about also with this topic, the essence of fatherhood, is hi, Pastor John, how you doing? Um, another thing I wanted to comment on when it comes to things like the essence of fatherhood is that do we really have a lot of fathers out there that understand what it means to be a father? Do we have a lot of men out there that are mentors, that are groomed? We have a lot of men that want to make big decisions, have billions of dollars. I want to be like a third dollar. I want to be like this. I want to be like Bill Gates. But in their day-to-day -day activities, in their in their day-to-day -day grooming activities what is happening are we even having men that being groomed do we even have men that even know how to treat a woman is it taught are men taught that so i'm going to be discussing all that with my guests and yes my guest is pastor john at the but i knew him when he was a pastor with um global harvest in um Akure and he is an amazing singer uh he's amazing singer amazing preacher amazing, and one of the things that i love about his ministry is that he always has have this he always has this men to men um conference that holds every year and they always always one of the basic things and one of the important things and i've seen the result in one of my friends is that they groom men to become better versions of themselves and i am not joking with you they groom men and it's been amazing seeing that my friend grow from what he is right what he was then to what he is right now married happy um doing well for himself being a better person it's very important for you to put or be around mental be around people that can help you be around, be around people that can also assist you what you're doing yes i'm so i want to really play songs but really these topics are really coming to my heart and i really want us to discuss them and I, and I and i want you to understand why we're talking about this topic today we have a lot of men out there that don't even understand they don't want to be like their fathers because their fathers were not even great examples and one of the attributes of like being a man or, or being a, a person is that you will actually be a great role model to your child or to whoever is looking up to you or whatnot but what we see nowadays is a lot of people have fathers or have mentor or have people that are like um their um should we call them what do we call them guardians that are the ones i i remember hearing a story i think it was one of a q and a with in tony bakarish church and the guy was like he lived with a couple of elder brothers of his and cousins and what happened that was how we knew about sleeping with women buying condoms doing this doing that yeah is it, is it wrong to learn learn about sex no it's not wrong but he he literally was seeing them have sex 
in the house so he growing up seeing them treat women anyhow seeing all those things he was like no i can't even what who are we so he was treating women anyhow all in the name of that's how my brothers do it that's how my cousins do it so what kind of role model are you to the next generation either you're a man or a woman but today we're talking about men yes we're talking about men and you know it's been an amazing time when you see a lot of women that are not taking the male role to be very sincere it's saddening that you see a i mean a lot when i mean a lot a lot of women taking the the woman's role all in the name of the 21st century woman or whatnot but it's not just because you're the 21st century woman most of these women don't want to do it but they're doing it all in because they they um they don't have that man that can do those things for them and they want to do it themselves you know they they try them they try as much as possible to make it look like oh the men are doing all these things and they're really not so they're the ones that provide they're the ones that cook they're the ones that teach they're the ones that, they're the ones that do all these things and their and their children are thinking oh mommy's the daddy and when the girls grow up, they'll be like i don't want to marry because there's nothing my father did for my mother that will make make you um that will make it look like oh i i would um i want to have a man you can't depend on him you can't talk to him you can't even relate with him but we have an heavenly father who we depend on who we trust who is always there for us who has always been there for us and today i'll be letting you listen to this amazing song with my big brother femi okunoga it is i depend on you yes jesus is the only one man will fail man will still fail but god can never fail you so i'll be playing this song and I'll be playing um uh what do you call it I'll be playing um if in nothing um featuring Emma Emma um is an old song that I really love you know they feel so I'll, I'll be playing this song back to back and I hope you love them when we are when we come back from the music break I'll be bringing in my guests and guess is gonna be talking to us about all this amazing stuff so first we're going to be having i depend on you by femi okonoga and we'll be having a man featuring if in nathan you know they fail which is our god our lord our savior and when we are back we'll bring in pastor john adetoyibo to come on the show and talk to us about the essence of fatherhood so you sit right back and listen to this amazing song Hello, people. How we doing? Hi, Esther. Hi, Bumi. Hi, Petri Timi. Hi, Legolas J. Hi, J. Javu. Hi, Motu. How you doing? Hi, MC Fems. How you doing? Hi, Pastor John. Hi, King Dave Isaac. Hi, Aremo Tosi. Mm. I depend on you. I depend on you. I depend on you. You have helped me in the past. You will help me again. You have helped me in the past. You will help me again. Hi, people. Hi, Dami Lala, how you doing? Hi, sis. I depend on you. I depend on you. I depend on you. I depend on you. You have helped me in the past. You will help me again. You have helped me in the past. You will help me again. I rely on you. I Pele Martins. I rely on you. I I am a You have healed me. I talk with you so you will heal me again. You will healed me in the past. Oh Jesus, I depend on you. Oh Jesus, God is the only Father that you can always. Hi Loretta, love day. Hi ma'am, how you doing? 
that you should like. Speak a word and it is done. Oh Jesus, I depend on you. I look up to you. Oh, oh amazing. I love this song so much. I look up. I, 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 it's Ontario. Hope you're enjoying yourself. Hope you're not affected with, by the heat wave. God, God be with you and your family. You're in the past. You provide again. I look up to you. 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 Up to you. you provide that in the past. You provide again. You provide that in the past. You provide again. You provide that in the past. You provide again. You provide that in the past. You provide again. You provide that in the past. You provide again. Provide that in the past. You provide again. You provide that in the past. You provide again. You provide that in the past. You provide again. Oh Jesus, I depend on you. Yeah, I learned Ontario is having like a heat wave right now. I depend on you. You are not a man that you should lie. You speak a word and it is fine. Oh Jesus, I depend on you. Jesus, I depend on you. Oh Jesus, I shake. You are not the man that you should lie. You speak a word and it is fine. I adore baby. How you doing? Oh my, my people are here. You are not a man that you should lie. You speak a word and it is done. Oh Jesus, I depend on you. I KPV that you should lie you speak a word and it is done oh jesus i depend on you you are the covenant keeping god oh jesus i depend on you Yes, you know the fellow man go for I glory cathedral. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, I've heard you. I've heard you, Adora Baby. <laughs> oh my, oh my. Thank you very much, people, for tuning in today. I really appreciate y'all. The end time I love to turn around every day, all around. Oh, everything's fair, but this God know the fellow, you know the fellow, you know the fellow. Mango fell, mango still the fell, but this God know the fellow, you know the fellow. You know the fellow, man go fail, man go steal the fail, but this God know the fellow. God never fails, it's the good, good father that's always been there for us. Like, your father will always fail you, but God can never fail you. It can cool my temper, will be God and master. You know this lawyer, you know this lumber. 
show their power. And you go show me super power. Ah. Never. I'm what's so dancing. They fail, but these guys know they fail, love. Oh my god, happy birthday to Adirak, baby. Oh my god, I, I'm gonna make a post on you. Oh my god, happy birthday, Adirak, baby. Long life, prosperity. The Lord bless you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. Everything you lay your hands upon shall prosper. Thank for your love and support. God bless you, sis. Happy birthday. God, God will always be there for you. Even when men fail, God will always be there for you. Oh. Papa God, you know they fail. You know they fail. Hey. Oh. Papa God, you know they fail. Yeah. For me, when everything is just so well. What's good for me, God? You know they fail. You know they fail. In all the fell, yeah. In all the fellow. In all the fellow. Hey. I'm gonna see the fell. But this guy, no, the fellow. No, no. In all the fellow. Man, go fell. Hey. In the morning, in the night. Oh my God, the Hey. Mama Mafi say, hey, man, go fail, man, go Do you know they fail? Hey, never. It never fails. It never fails. Yes. You know they fail, Ah, fish your toe Hi, hello, sir. How you doing? Hi, Auntie Nike. Hi, Cheryl Lowry. Man, go fail. Man, go still, they fail. But this God, no, they fail. Yes, man, go fail. Man, go still, they fail. But this God will never fail you. He said, He never sleeps. He never slumbers. He will always be there for you. Yes, man, go fail. Man, go still, they fail. But this God, no, they feel. We're adding up our guests. And what are we talking about today? The essence of fatherhood. And I want you to say what one thing that you really feel like, and one thing you really love about your father that you feel, oh my God, if not for this, this in my father, or if not for this in the father figures I had around me, probably I would have done this. Probably this would have happened to me. Is there any instance you've had that kind of situation where sometimes you just sit down, thank God that, oh, thank God for my father. Or you say, oh my God, thank God that I had this person that stood in as a role model for me. Or probably you are a father now and you're thanking God for the lessons you've learned over the years. If there's anyone that wants to share, you just drop your comment and we'll read it as i was saying before the music break it is very important to have father figures both as um guys and also as ladies there's that bond that you always have with your father and you know when we have and i think that i i read a particular article where the, we had ab absentee fathers right and i've said as abs <laughs> absentee fathers oh my um i'm trying Probably it's a network issue, but we'll keep trying. Yeah. So as I was saying, when you have a father in your life, there's this bond that you you should have. And when you don't get that bond or when you don't see that bond or when you don't experience that bond, there is a way that it's going to look like or seem like or act like for you like i've had people that would say never i don't want to meet my father i don't want to know who my father is because it was this it was that it was that and i'm like well i understand your pain but it's very very important that yeah pastor john please send me a request i've been trying to... we didn't know what's going on 
it's very important to have like your father. Yes, I have my guest in the house. Hello, sir. So, as I was saying, it is very important um, for the doing in Welcome to Life Matters on our day rate. It hears 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Alberta time and 6 p.m. Nigerian time. And today I'm having Pastor John Adetoyibo all the way from Nigeria and he's talking about the essence of fatherhood. Yes, the essence of fatherhood. And we're just discussing our experiences. I had a very strict dad, like over the years. I, I, I saw him to be like, yeah, welcome, sir. How you doing? Doing great. <laughs> yeah. Good evening. Um, good so morning. Good afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's our own morning and, and it's your evening. Mm -hmm. So I'll start with the intro. I, I already introduced uh, or talked about you. And I, and I thank God for the men to men program you used to do. Well, I, I don't know if you still do it till now. But I know that probably it's going to be like, uh, mm -hmm. probably, I'm thinking, I'm thinking that it should probably be things that the vibrant church is supposed to make as part of their focus because it is one program that at least i don't know anybody i have one person that i know is a changed person from your mentorship and your grooming over the years oh, and i wanted oh, to yeah. say what came what 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 came what was in your mind when you said i i tell my friends that we have programs for women to be better Better wife, better daughters, do this. Women, this. We how women pray when women this. But you really send your programs for men, and we see that the millennial woman now is already like taking everything. I'm sorry, but taking a lot of like play, taking a lot of strong um positions and stuff from men because we don't have all doing all that work. We have absentee fathers. We have men that don't even care about what's going. On. We have men that um. What came to your mind when you said the program meant to me? Um, okay. I, I remember that it's not everybody that's, well, I say it's not everybody that has had the privilege of having a father figure in their life. And let's imagine that their father is late or for some of them it was like I have not so many people had that opportunity that is going on I, I remember when Rappu did a mentorship program that were addicted in um, coding and a couple of stuff but it took one person yeah. to do that so conference Hello. Yeah, we can well, you, good evening, everybody. Good morning. Good. All right, all right. Well, if I've had your question well, the line is breaking here. But if I've had your question uh, very clearly, and anyway, before I proceed, I would like to say thank you, Anu, for bringing me on. You're welcome. To sir. life, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, if I had the previous question that was turns into, uh, into having a man-to-man -man program. Yeah. Well, I discovered that the, that the problems we are having world over, the social meanings that we are having world over, that governments of nations around the world are spending so huge amount of their resources, their, their meager resources to to fix uh, problems that are fundamental that could be solved and uh, nipped at the bud at home. More importantly, mm. where there is the, 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 the spirit of responsibility in mm. ideal fatherhood, mm. where we have ideal fatherhood mm. at the home front. Mm. So I believe that it's, it's, it's a crucial, we, we, we have the bankruptcy the shortage, the, the death, and deficiency of real fatherhood. Hmm. That is a major problem in our world today. Hmm. And actually, I got the revelation from the book of John, John hmm. chapter 6, and Mark chapter 6 as well, hmm. 
Mm. Uh, John chapter 6 was talking about where Jesus was feeding the 5,000. Mm. Uh, he just taught them and then he asked the disciples that he wouldn't allow these people to go. Mm. That they should try to give them something to eat. Mm. And the Bible says he asked them this question, but he knew what to do, that there's nothing uh, to, to around to feed these people with. Mm. Long story cut short. After there is the provision of five loaves of bread and um, two fishes, mm. the Bible says that Jesus asked them to sit down in clusters of fifties and hundreds. Mm. You know, the Bible says that he actually fed 5,000. Yeah. And then Bible theology and said that if women and ch- were to be included, uh, there should be more than 10,000 or 15,000. Yes. Now, that gave me a, a, a kind of revelation from that place. Mm. Why is it that the Bible emphasizes men? Mm. You understand? It's very simple. I just asked the question, okay, uh, Holy Spirit, just say something about it. Why is it that Jesus asked them to sit? And then the Bible took cognizance of 5,000 men without uh, taking the census of the women, the and, women and the children into cognizance. Mm. Yes. Now, the, 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 the rest of me by the Holy Spirit is that uh, if you have the head of the family, the mm. man, mm. where he sits, mm. that is where his wife would sit, mm. that is where his children would sit. Mm. In other words, naturally, mm. they would just come mm. around him. Mm. Naturally. Mm. Mm. So, which means that fathers, men, set the pace. Mm. They dictate the tune for the society. If mm. fathers get it right, then the mm. society would get it right. If fathers could get it right in mm. the home front, then naturally the behavioral pattern that we take from the home front is what we, we take into the larger society. If you mm. come from a dysfunctional home, then we ha- you take that spirit into society to mm. create a dysfunctional society. Mm. So that is the problem. So when God gave me that problem, I mean that, that revelation and that vision, mm. and then mm. that is what uh, uh, mm. how we started to run with the vision, man to man, you know, and then trying to fix a major problem that has to do with manhood and fatherhood. Mm. You understand? Mm. But there's another one that we are trying to do, which has to do with boys to men conference. Mm. It's trying to groom boys into mm. real, uh, uh, real men. Uh, manhood. Mm. Mm. God bless you, sir. Yeah. I, I love how you put it. Where the father is, if he's there, the children and the wife will be there together because they'll see him as like yeah. a torch, like a light. And one of the things that I noticed is yes. the, the thing about fatherhood is looking up to there is that mentorship or role model ship in court that you see children who want to do, oh, that's how my mommy yes. does it, that's how my daddy does it. But when the father is absent, what happens to that kind You're of child? Right. When, when the father is not, probably the, the father can be just that are present. They have. But they are looking for children. So how do we want to, how do we around or work with children like that that have present like absentee fathers but are present in the home sorry i want to hear the question again how do we work with children have present absent fathers fathers are in the home but they are absent in their abilities well i i believe that Honestly speaking, we, we've had women, if I'm getting your question right now, that how do we um, handle the issues with children who have um, fathers who are absent at home, who are yeah. not there to take up their responsibilities? Am I yeah. getting the question right? Yes, sir. Yeah. I, 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 I believe, uh, yes, we have men, we have women in our world uh, that are single-handedly raised by their mothers, mm. and um, they are they are they are really doing well. Yeah. But we still they, they are they are just in in the minority, mm. so to say. Mm. If you see a lot of crimes in our society, social vices in our society, and then when you trace it logically, you you you, you notice that it's traced to a home 
where there is dysfunctionality, where the mm. father is not playing his key role. Now, vice versa, we have some issues whereby some, some children are raised single-handedly by their fathers and the, the mothers, they're nowhere to be found yes. at the same time. Yes. We know that. But concentrating on, the, on fatherhood now, I believe so strongly that, like my, my, my own dad, my late dad was raised by a mom. Not because mm. his father, I mean, his father was not absent, but he, 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 he died, you know, at mm. a very uh, young. young age when my dad was still very young. Yeah, mm. you know, so, so to say. And my, my dad still turned out well, mm. so to say, by the grace of God. But I believe they are still in the minority. Mm. It is, is a clarion call on men because one of the problems we are having in our society, truth be told, I know, is the problem of identity crisis. Hi. You understand what I'm trying to say? Yes, sir. And you, 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 your identity says a lot mm. about you. Mm. A lot of people, they don't know who they are. Mm. If you don't know who you are, you can't value yourself. Mm. If you don't place value on yourself, you cannot place value on anybody. True. You understand what I'm trying to say? True, sir. And it's, 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 it's a fundamental problem. That and you derive your identity, quote and unquote, from your father. Hmm. You understand? What I'm trying to say, I know we have heavenly father, we have yeah. biological father, yes. but like things here. Yeah. Oh, we are talking about ideal fatherhood here. Yes. You know, being a father in the right sense of it. Yes. So you need to derive your true identity from your father. Hmm. You understand? What I'm trying to say now. Hmm. For instance, in the book of Genesis, chapter 49. Uh, um, there is when, 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 when Jacob was about to die, he caught forth his children, his sons. I said, I will tell you what will become of your life. He was trying to explain the identity to them. So mm. how would they return out in life? Yes. Yes. In my, his firstborn Reuben, he placed a cost on him because of what he did. I will have a thank God for another spiritual father in mm. Moses in Deuteronomy 33. He mm. corrected that error. Mm. and gave Reuben back his ideal identity. Mm. You understand what I'm trying to say now? So he gave every of his, of his sons their identity in destiny. Now, if you look at the case of John the Baptist, when John the Baptist was born, don't forget the, uh, the, the scenario, I mean, the circumstances that surrounded his birth. Yes. How his father encountered an angel in the, in the temple, and yes. he was doubting uh, yeah. the implication of the prophecy and the angel said you will not be able to speak and all that mm -hmm. yes you know and unfortunately you know the god remember us mm. god remembered him but he, he doubted that god can actually remember him <laughs> you understand what I'm trying to say anyway that is by the way wow. now when the time came it eight, eight, eight days after when it was john was to be circumcised that is what we call um Name the christening yes. you understand there was identity, yes, naming ceremony <laughs> in, 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 in African setting, you understand? Yeah, yeah. Now, the Bible says the relatives of John, I mean, Zechariah, they came. They said they would name this boy Zechariah. That has been the part in the family. Hmm. So that is his identity. Hmm. And the mother said, no way, this is not the revelation we got from God. And the hmm. Bible says they beckoned, you know, on the father to give them what the name of that boy would, 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 would be. In other hmm. words, what his identity would be. He said it would mm. not be named Zechariah, but John. Mm. You understand? And that was his identity. You understand what I'm trying to say? So we yes. have identity problem in our society. Mm. A lot of people don't actually know who they are. A lot of people, in the, they are trying to imitate others. Mm. And in the bid of trying to imitate others, they have lost touch with themselves. They don't even understand who they are again. That's the reason with the problem with gender issues and all that. It's identity crisis. And hmm. fathers are there to affirm, if ideals father are there, they are meant to affirm who every child should be or hmm. is in God. Hmm. You understand what I'm trying to say? They tell hmm. you, if, even if the, the, the child is not trying to, uh, is, is, is in sick, has problem with self, self, so low self-esteem, the father would just say, no, 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 my boy. No, 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 my girl. This is who you are. Hmm. Don't be afraid. Hmm. Don't feel insecure. That's hmm. another problem. We have a hmm. problem of insecurity. Hmm. You understand? In mm. our world today, a lot of people are not secure. A lot of people, they are just dealing with low self-esteem. Mm. You understand what I'm trying to say? So yes. I believe that um, uh, we, 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 women that, uh, or mothers that are alone, 
uh, they should turn now or, or, or turn it over to God, the Heavenly Father, mm. to be the father to their children. Mm. You understand? If there's no, there's no way they could get a, another, I mean, the father to come back home, or probably the father is late, or mm. and then there's no, probably they are not trying to remarry to, give, to get another foster father or something like that. They should yeah. turn it over to God. Mm. Because he said it would be the father to the fatherless. Yes. And I believe Most so strongly that, you know, mm. yes, yes. Mm. Just like Zig Ziglar would always have said, I was not privileged to know my father, that his father died at the age of, at the age of, um, at the age of two or three. He says, mm. was, but he said, but his mother raised him well. Mm. I said he has become, before, before Zig Ziglar passed on, he, the man became father to a lot of people, to generations, millions of people world over. You yeah. understand? It turned out well, even without a father. Mm. So we need to, he said, be, simply because his mother turned it over to the Heavenly Father. Mm. So our Heavenly Father is still there to fix issues. Mm. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, sir. So I wanted to say, in, in, in a nutshell, what would you say about it? Why did God create man? What's the God saying? Have dominion because I, I always think of this thing and I say, so God created man in His own image. He said, "Let us." So He took God the Father, God the Son, yeah. God the Holy Spirit to put that man together. So there, there are a lot yeah. of things God had put inside the man. When He yeah. became a father to Cain and Abel, days that we had. What's the what's the main essence of having a father? What's the essence of fatherhood in the real sense of it? We can we can have anybody give back to us. Thank you for that. Go under someone. Else. Yeah. So why, why 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 is it very important to to understand what fatherhood yeah. means? Fatherhood. Thank you for that question. Fatherhood is God's idea. Hmm. Um. How do I know? God created. Um, Adam to be the father mm. of the earth. Mm. You understand? Now, when Adam filled him, he looked for another man, Noah, to make his covenant with him. Mm. When Noah filled him, he looked for another man, and that man is called Abraham mm. in Genesis 12. Yes. And then you will discover that when God actually wanted to change his identity, he said he will not be called Abraham, but Abraham, meaning father uh -huh of nations. nations you can see father over there so it's, it's god's idea and then when god created adam and eve but let me say it this way god created adam to be the lover of eve god mm. created adam not just to be the lover of eve but the father that he was not privileged to have a father mm. figure do you understand mm. what i'm trying to say now so if you are marrying a, 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 if you are marrying a woman, know that you are not just marrying a wife or a lover, you are marrying a mother. Hmm. If you are marrying a man, you are not just marrying a, 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 a boyfriend, but a father figure as well. Hmm. well. Hmm. So fa 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 fatherhood is God's ideal. In fact, hmm. I used to say this, that I thank God that we celebrate uh, Mother's Day. My um, father all this probably three times a year or something. You understand? But I used to say that without any, any sense of disparity, or I love women like no man's business. I love them. Mm -hmm. I love their roles they are playing in our world. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I always say that there's no motherhood without fatherhood. That's just a plain truth. True. You understand what I'm trying to say? So, and if, if, if you look at, for instance, if you look at the problem that Cain had, the problem of Cain was the problem of insecurity. Yes. He couldn't stand the success of somebody else. He couldn't yes. stand somebody else. And that's what we have a lot of people like that in our world. They couldn't stand other people's trophies, victories, credits, and successes. Mm. It's a problem. It's not a problem of adulthood. It's a problem that started from childhood that ought mm. to be fixed by fathers. Mm. You, need, you should be able to know that there's a, there's, that there's a, a trait of insecurity in your child. I say, so mm. no, don't do that. No, you need to celebrate others when they are celebrating. Don't mm. not envy them. You mm. understand? It's one yes. of the problems that Cain had that Adam failed to carry out as a father to fix when Cain mm. was a child. Mm. You understand what I'm trying to say? So I believe so strongly that... Uh, uh,
Mm-hmm. Learning people, I am learning. You know, it takes a lot to understand that fire is not just a you just get in the head, da 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 da, having a child. It's it goes from the core, which is God. He was the first father to all everyone in the world. What do you see right now? You see men and we take the idea from God, take their identity from who they really are, who God has truly created them to be. And what's that identity? The identity of God, the identity of understanding why God created them, living a purpose-driven life. And that's what fatherhood is all about. Fatherhood is about, like, it, it, it's like God planting a seed and seeing the seed grow. And when the seed grows, it makes it better for the father to actually have better relations with his children. And that is the essence and the true nature of fatherhood. If a father doesn't see his, his, um, his children grow, then there is a fundamental problem. That, like there's a fundamental problem when a father's interest is not in the growth and development of his children there's a fundamental problem when a father doesn't understand what it means to have a child to himself and to take care of the child and to understand that this child should be a better version or better than me you know we see a lot of rich 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 men and women out there and we're like oh yeah i'm going to i want to be like this person i want to be like that person but when you look at it in the real sense of it you see a lot of fathers that don't even understand what it means or what 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 we what we should take or what we should talk about when we, when it comes to fathers and like i was saying i remember tony rapper doing a uh, doing this grooming thing for this particular man and when i was watching the interview i was really sad they said the amount of coding they take every day is uh, they can't do without it yeah i think one of the things the guy said the guy said that a day cannot go that without them consuming codeine every day and imagine those kind of men in a society and having them being role models to other guys and these other younger guys will be like oh i have seen a father i have seen a this i have seen a that and they believe that doing all these vices doing all these things is the right way to go it's not even the right way to go on um, and unfortunately for a lot of people they don't have anyone that will lead them towards the right direction we are christians for those that are christians we are christians and we have our heavenly father we have the word of god as a template for direction but for people that don't have that what do they do those are questions we ask ourselves for ladies that don't understand that that feel like oh it's just who is this man my father was not there i don't care because my father was not there and i turned out well so i don't need a man in my life we have a lot of women and young men that like that so if you're a father if you're a young man out there what are the essential things you have to do what are the essential duties you have to do to make sure that you're a better version of yourself First, you like Pastor John said, you have to take care of that identity issue. Who are you? So if you don't have a father to tell you you are, are you mentored? I, I believe that one of the greatest gifts that we can ever have as Christians, as children of God, and as human beings is having a good mentor, a great mentor that can lead you, that can guide you through your growth. As human beings, as people, we are not highlands. Let me tell you the truth. There's no how. For me, I have a lot of father figures that when I need this help, I go and meet, oh, hi, hold this. But we don't have people. We feel, I believe our generation has this mentality of, I can do it all by myself. I don't need anybody. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome back, sir. So we're talking, we're, Thank you we're so talking much. about the identity crisis Kane had. And I, I believe that I, I, I I love that illustration you gave because if if Adam was let me use the word efficient as a father if he had actually ch trained them where he had always been there for them and be guiding them all the way he himself would have put Cain in the right direction but if we, if we go back yeah. to the problem Adam had problem of authority yeah in the sense of when God said where are you Adam I'm hiding. Okay. 
why did you do this, this, this? He said, was it not the woman you gave to me? So he, he didn't believe in taking responsibility for wrong. And when God said, yeah. why are you hiding Cain? Why did you do this to your brother? Where is, where is your brother Abel? The next thing he said was, am I my brother's keeper? So we see that there yeah. is a part of responsibility and identity crisis from that generation, even to the generation yeah. of Cain. Yeah. Yeah. So, so can you hear me now? Hello? Okay, I can hear yeah, you now. We're here. Oh, I okay, can hear okay, you okay. now. So why don't you to continue? Why don't you to continue from where where you you were before? Okay. That you, you, you asked the question about um, Cain. The and, uh... Yeah, so, so I was saying that it's, it's like a thread. Like if you see the, the bots that was in the life of Adam, you see the same thing that they were, they were dodging responsibility. When, when God asked yeah. Adam, why did you do this? Was it not the woman you gave to me? When God asked my brother. Yeah. You see that it's not that yes. the mentorship should have been in place for Cain. Because you would expect that because Adam had always had that close relationship. They said in the cool of the evening, the spirit of the Lord would come and have fellowship with Adam. So you expect that Adam should know better, but I don't yeah. know. Maybe he was yeah. not learning. Like, yes. I, like you have said, I, I, I believe so strongly that he must have learned some stuff from, mm. from Adam that Adam um, has a mastery in, in, in playing the blame game. You mm. understand? Number one, he, first of all, he denied his, his, his present circumstance with God. He was trying to hide. Number two, which means he lacks integrity. Then mm. number two, um, he was trying to play the blame game, trying to say that, is it not the woman that you gave to me? You understand? Mm. And if you look at the trade, and I want to believe while living as husband and wife as a family, I mean, a Abraham, Eve, Cain, and Abel, they must have seen Abraham still doing the same thing, trying to mm. play the blame game. You understand? Or trying mm -hmm. to hide, and they know that that is not actually saying the truth. You understand? Trying to say so. And yeah. they must have seen it as a way of life. And that was the reason mm. why the guy couldn't. There's no and then you, God asks you, mm. no sober reflection, no sense of sobriety. I said, why are you Just asking brother. me? So he must have seen that kind of, yeah, he must have seen that kind of trace or, or you know, from his, his, his father. Yeah. You understand what I'm trying to say? Because I believe so strongly that um, Hebel must have been a kind of brother that is so dutiful. You know, is a man that is given mm -hmm. to details. And then anytime mm -hmm. they, they will give them house chores to do, Hebel is a kind of a boy that will want to fix everything before mommy comes back from, from work or from marketing. But Cain yes, is right, yes. so, such a man that is, you know, so restless and is not, he doesn't even value anything. And by the time mommy comes back from the market or from work, and mommy, mommy sees that a a Abel has been able to, to, to fix his own chores. And then mommy tries to give Abel something bigger or better to compensate him. Then you can see mm. Cain misbehaving. Trying to say, no, I am the oldest, mm. or I'm older, and uh, why must mm. you give you this to him? Mm. And they, they wouldn't, instead of them mm. to have corrected him, you understand? Mm. At that point in time, they just, you know, they just, I, I could see them, you know, picturing now that they just wave it aside, like they would mm. say, it's just a child, it's just a boy, yeah, a little boy. A boy. And over time, that attitude, yeah, so they're just like, he's a little boy, he doesn't know, just leave him, leave him. Mm. And then leave him, the guy grows up from being, a, a little boy to a teenager from being a teenager like that like that and the same attitude has grown within yes. to the extent that he just feels that because god honors the the, the 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 sacrifice or the worship of his brother beyond his and then because of that level of uh, insecurity that has been with him from childhood and his father was not there to correct you understand yes. he just feel like i'm going to silence this boy forever Mm. And then he did, and no, 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 no conscience. His conscience has been so seared mm. that to feel like um, I've done something miserable. So 
I believe that in as fathers, yes, we, we, we should we should love our children, but I believe discipline um, to dis to discipline your child is still a reflection of genuine love, hmm. rather than trying to abscond from discipline your child. The Bible says, train up your child in the way that is good. When he grows up, he will not depart from he it. Grows and one of the ways to not, train them is to discipline depart. them. Yes, it, it won't depart, you know. Hmm. And one of the ways is, is at times you train hmm. them up in, in a soft, you know, with soft hands. Time, it might actually need that you introduce some, you know, some cane of correction, you know. Hmm. Uh, so hmm. I believe. Hmm. So, so when, when we sit down and look at the 21st century man, and we look at how yeah. men and the women, how men treat their okay. sisters, their their mothers. Yep. You mm. ask yourself, where are the fathers out there? I ask myself sometimes because mm. I see guys that talk to their fathers anyhow. I see guys that talk treat their mothers anyhow, beat up their sisters like anything, and. They have fathers at home, but you see, there's no training, there is no caution, there is no pullback from okay, be a better person. So my my question will be that if a man is not well trained, is it possible for him to train his own children well? If a man is not well trained, is it possible for what? For him to train his own children well, because that's how I see these days. That is that not trained well they were and that's why a yeah. lot of guys are turning out how they're turning out to be yeah well it's in two folds that the answer to that question is in two folds there's every likelihood we have seen people that that men that actually uh, came from a very terrible background a dysfunctional mm -hmm. background and mm -hmm. uh, they just they just came to their senses that I can't I can't turn now the way my father lived Hmm. And then, just like you said the other time, they just probably because of the grace of God or the mercy of God, they stumbled hmm. on a path of good mentoring. You understand? They just stumbled hmm. on a relationship. Hmm. Hmm. I am a responsible father. Something just, you know, inside every... Hmm. Every human, there is a place where everybody knows what is right from what is wrong. Hmm. You understand? What I'm trying to say so. Yes, sir. even the 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 most terrible of all, they know that uh, what we are doing is not right. Hmm. Only that they might just have their conscience seared. Hmm. You understand? What I'm trying to say so. Somebody that that probably you come from a like functional home, and then you have seen a model home or a, a model mm. ideal father that, you've, mm. that you said, no, I love the way this man is living his life with his family. You understand what I'm trying to say? Then mm. there is every likelihood you can, you can ask for, for help, whether such a person could mentor you. And even without asking for, you know I mean, literally asking the person that, okay, come and help me or something, you can just be studying the person from afar and then mm. a lot of things will rub off on you. Mm. You understand what I'm trying to say? Mm. And then you discover that um, once you have the determination that you want to change, you change mm. with the help of the Holy Spirit, with the help of God. You know, you, 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 you change. That is what I believe, that you don't have, for the fact that you, you, you have a terrible father, it's not an excuse that you repeat the same cycle mm. for your own generation. No, you can mm. turn a new leaf. Mm. And now, let me go to the spiritual angle of it. I believe that yeah. a bulk of us don't understand the essence of the fatherhood God has for us. We don't understand. We don't, yeah. we don't appreciate. We don't, we don't see it as something really important. That's how I feel. I feel like a lot of people just want, they, are, they have this relationship with God of daddy give me. And when he's done, they go. Which is not healthy. Okay. So how do we, yeah. as children of God, understand and 
use the the kind of re- father father child relationship God has given unto us and use it well so that we also still are responsible to our father and also our father too is responsible to us. Okay. Um well let me let me cite an example. One of the things um uh by the grace of God that I'm trying to the culture I'm trying to imbibe into my children has to do with that you don't try to play with me you know mm. to uh, as a as a like a, a father son uh fun time or father daughter fun time mm. uh, when you actually need something from me you understand I'm trying mm. to say like you want daddy to do something then go and play with daddy a little and then after a while you just say daddy can you do this for me please and after mm. daddy does that you are home you that is not saying you again i try mm. to discourage that kind of attitude you know, mm. because I want you to come and play with me, whether you have a need or you don't have a need. Sure. Let's play. Let's just flow. You understand? Mm. And I believe so strongly that that should be the attitude with our Heavenly Father as well. So mm. we, shouldn't, we shouldn't just have uh, the spirit of the children that is only when they have a need that they will come to the Father, give me, give me, give me, give me spirit. And then once mm. it's done, you, you just see then that they, they took to their heels and they know where to be mm-hmm. found again. So mm. we, we need to develop a, a cordial, sincere relationship with our Heavenly Father. You know, mm. He's the Father of all spirits, says the Bible. And uh, mm. what, even if you are still privileged to have an earthly father, what mm. your earthly father cannot do? In fact, there will always be a time that your earthly father will no longer be there. I mm. could remember the, 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 the day my father-in-law passed on, mm. my wife turned with, to me with tears. I mean, I've never seen her in that form. He said, you have become mm-hmm. my father. Mm. I was like, oh, I thought I was only meant to be a lover. <laughs> I mean, you could see her, you know, shedding tears. And... <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you said. <laughs> you know? oh he, said, he said, you have become my father. You know, when she said that, it don't know mean that. So actually every husband is not just meant to be a husband forever. Mm. A time will come that the father in you must come. You must father your wife as well. Mm. And your every wife too. You will mm. just not remain a wife forever, a lover. There mm. is a there, there will always be a cycle where you won't mm. just be a lover, but a mother to your husband and your, to your children. To say so, I believe, yes, sir. I believe so strongly that um, um, we need to the same way. We need to. There's a place. A time comes that everybody. It doesn't matter where your father gets to, whether one twenty years of age, and there's nowhere to be found, and uh, you still miss them. There is always the place, even if the father is still alive. Mm. You cannot substitute the, the, the place of your father, earthly father, with that of heavenly father. No, no, mm. no, 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 no. Mm. So, and mm. that is a clarion call for everyone that is here to have that relationship. The mm. way to the father is Jesus Christ. Mm. That's just a plain truth. To start that relationship is mm. Jesus Christ. You mm. understand? He says, no one can come to the father except, except through me. me. That's what Jesus says. And mm. then a lot of us, I mean, a lot of people out there that are yet to know what we are enjoying in Christ Jesus, they can, you know, they can start to raise dust. Like, uh, what, what do they mean about Jesus to the way to the, way mm. to the Father? Well, mm. The Bible says, come and taste and see that the Lord is good. Mm. You understand? Until you come in, you don't know what we are enjoying mm. from the Heavenly Father. Mm. That, is, that is key. From the Heavenly Father, that is key. Mm. So I, I wanted to ask this question. And it's, it's sad I'm asking, yeah. but I... When you read stories, yep. you see father rapes daughter, father did this to this, and children like that grow up as guys or as ladies with the mindset of, I can't have a man in my life yeah. because of this, because of this that happened to me. Now, we have someone like Joyce Mayer that actually yeah. was molested by her own father. Yeah. And she turned out to be a yeah. great woman, but it took her time to heal. So what would you say to women who have been through where in you should not even have any relations with that man called your father? But they still have would you say can be the the I would like how would I call it the healing pattern to use? I, I, 
happen to but how would you if someone like that comes to meet you and say i don't want to get married because this is happened to me longer, and i have had that kind of experience over the years and it's it's not working for me how do you kind of mentor or how do you how would you um advise as the person's okay. past how, how would you around that okay. situation well um number one the is is so sad to hear that kind of um how deal and um, experiences in our world. That shows the level of perversion in our mm. world today. To, um, uh, a father sleeping or raping uh, his biological uh, daughter. Mm. It's even worse off. If, 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 if it's not your biological mo of, uh, daughter, if mm. she were to be your stepdaughter is even wrong. Hmm. You understand what I'm trying to say? Yes. You are not the one uh, to give back to her. It's wrong. It's, it's not godly. Because hmm. if, if, you have, if you have married a mother, then you should see it as a privilege to, 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 to become the father and then treat her hmm. as such. I mean, as your hmm. daughter. So, and then let alone having uh, fathers raping and sleeping with their, with their biological daughters. I have had hmm. series of that, hmm. at least, um, you know, but the virtue and the privilege of our position as a pastor. Hmm. And uh, one of the things I, I advise, I counsel such victim is that where it is quite unfortunate that it happened. Hmm. However, according to the dictates of, of God's word, hmm. to handle the situation rally, for you to move forward in life, that is where the place of forgiveness comes in. Hmm. You know, because um, there is no sin that is, uh, it doesn't matter how terrible that sin might look, that the blood of Jesus is not potent enough to handle. That is hmm. number one. Hmm. And then number two, if, if God forgives any form of sinners, any form, whether the person rapes his daughter or whatsoever or kills people at will or not, all that, you know, if he comes and surrenders today to Christ, the blood of Jesus is potent enough to cleanse the, the slate clean of all the, mm. the, the past deeds. You understand what I'm trying to mm. say? And at mm. the same time, for every believer, if such a person, a victim, uh, has come to Christ, the first thing, the way forward for that victim is that, look, for you to move forward, you have to forgive that man, whether the man admits or not. That is number one. Then number two, you have to forgive yourself. Hmm. Because why did I say forgive yourself? The person is hurting. And there's no way, when you are hurting, you begin to have the root of bitterness. That's hmm. what the Bible calls it. And the mm -hmm. root, uh, the, the Bible, uh, you know, the, when you have the root of bitterness, the Bible says it will trouble you. When you are nursing hurt, unforgiveness in your spirit for valid uh, misdeeds or invalid or invalid, mm. it does not trouble the person you are having that hurt against. It hurts you yeah. yourself. So yes. the healing process starts from the inside out. You understand what I'm trying mm. to say? It starts from the inside mm. out. You know what? First of all, forgive yourself. Even if the person has not admitted or whatsoever, and then receive the love of God. I know you have not done mm. anything wrong, but just receive the love of God and then say, Lord, I know you can heal me from this. It might take time. You know, that is the, that is the power of time. Mm. With time, you will heal. Mm. And the Bible says you will forget mm. the shame of your youth. And then, the Bible says, mm. blessed be God, uh, the Father of all comfort, who comfort us in all our tribulation, that with the comfort that we have received, may comfort others. You understand what I'm trying mm. to say? Thank God you made yeah. mention of um, Joyce Mayer. Look at the impact, the exploit that Mama is doing world over today. Mm. As a result of forgiving herself. Mm. And as a result of forgiving her father. Mm. And then, 
she turned a misery into ministry. Mm. Okay, you know, and God as 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 out of that hero, God has buffeted for her honor. So that's what we're talking about. A lot of people today, because of Joyce Mayer, they could boldly say, oh, we, I'm going through this thing. They can't, you know, initially, when such things happen, nobody can come out. And nobody will no, believe no, no, no. you. Even when You're you not come. trying to say now. Mm. Nobody will believe them. But thank God for people like Joyce Mayer. And then people now, world over, experiencing such a thing, they can come boldly to, to, to seek succor in mm. such an abode of people that have had similar experiences and they have come out of it and they have been healed and they mm. have turned their pains into gains, mm. into ministry, and mm. they are helping others around mm. the world. Mm. It's quite unfortunate if it had happened, but the world does not, the life must not end at that. We must turn it around. If life throws a lemon at you, turn Make it around lemonade. into a lemonade. Yeah. Um, one yeah. of the things we talked about last month, and I remember that this this particular series has been coming up every time we, we talk about abuse is men yeah. that are being abused in their homes. And 90% of okay. the men that are spoken to me say, we can't tell anybody. Who do you want to tell that your wife <laughs> beating you? Is it the society that will mock you first or your family that would mm. like every Men hurt and don't want to say it. The reason why I use the topic, yeah. the essence of fatherhood, is not just talk about fatherhood, but to talk of, also talk about the struggles men are facing out there in the world and, and, and talk about how they can actually get help as men. Most of them don't want to talk about it. Yeah. They want to hold it up. They want to... They, and now it's getting that men are being killed in their homes because of things like that. So yeah. how do we raise help and awareness to young men and married men out there that yeah. in the in situations where I, I even heard of one that before they they are not yet married, but the reason why he had to break up that relationship was because the girl was already slapping him while they were dating. I'm like <laughs> I feel weak. Yeah. How are we even training our daughters? So it's like Daughters are not seeing great role yeah. models. Men are not seeing great role models. And when yeah, they get married, yeah. they are being abused in their homes and they don't want to talk to anybody because they oh, feel yeah. society will mock them. So how do we help men out there mm. who are going through abuse in their homes and healing? Thank you so much for that question. Honestly speaking, number one, I want to say it's quite wonderful Okay, are you true with the question? Yeah, yes, sir. All right. It's quite wonderful um, what the women around the world are doing for the, you know, to create awareness about stuff that women are going through and they are trying to provide um, lasting solutions to what women get around the world are going through. You know, their sufferings and their devastations from, quote and unquote, men's world. You understand? And either we like it or yes, things are turning around for the better. More importantly, for, for the women, for, for the girl child and all that. And thank you for realizing that things are just turning around. You understand? Used in their marriages as well. A lot of men that have married mm. stronger women than they are, you understand what I'm trying to say, uh, been mm. abused. Mm. But mm. nobody is talking. You understand? When mm. I know somebody is out there, I know that God has given me a ministry around that area as well uh, for men you know, around mm. the world, yeah, for grooming and all that mentoring and trying to do something about um, the, the boy child, you know. And stuff like that. But I believe that the same thing that is being done for women, men should look at it. If this, if you look at that's a relationship that your wife is boxing you at every slightest um, provocation. Mm. 
and see what comes out of that mm. little gap. And if she turns a new leaf and all that, fine. But if it's not turning a new leaf, don't stay there until you die, until she slaughters you. Mm. That is what we advise women, wives that have been, you know, experiencing battery at home. Don't stay there until he kills you. So for men too, that they, they have it, you know, you know, at the opposite. Don't stay in that marriage until your wife kills you. Hmm. You understand trying to say, and the people will now be saying, and I didn't know they should have, they should have done this, you should have done that. You hmm. understand trying to seek help. Number one thing is that if you, you might find the woman might be, or the like the the the, the, the other way around. Hmm. Your woman might need counsel. Hmm. You understand trying to say, out of love you can tell her, ah, love, or I don't know the pet name you call her. You can say, ah, are you sure that we don't need? Or uh, counseling about this thing. I don't like the way you are beating me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't like the way you are harassing me I, I am as my wife. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! You, you know? And wow! If, you, if, wow. if she agrees, <laughs> you know, let you just go. You know, she just go and and and, and get a counselor. If they have a, uh, if, if you're a believer, they should go and see their pastor. They shouldn't hide from it. And as a matter of fact, pastors shouldn't make their story headline. You understand? Uh, yes, you know, so I love all those are sensitive that. issues. Oh my God, I am sorry. <laughs> I remember we <laughs> did, yes. I remember we did a particular, I had a particular night, sorry for cutting you short. I remember we did a particular night show and we actually asked okay. some people that, okay, um, when you have problems, when you go through stress, when you go through troubles, who is the first person you talk to when you're going through this? And they say, my friend, uh, my this, my dad. I'm like, ah, why not your pastor? And like, eh? So that my, my story become uh, Sunday preaching. And I was so happy you actually touched mm -hmm. on that. I am so happy you did. Because I, I believe that the church is like a safe <laughs> haven where we should be able to come talk about issues that affect us and feel safe. Like, feel like, oh, we're at home. We're safe. People don't even want to talk about things like that because they say they will say, oh, uh, I'll become the laughing stock of the church or I'll become this or I'll become that. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I don't believe that should be the case if, if we have... Um, ministers that actually love god ministers that actually understand what yeah. their 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 members are going through i don't believe that it should be something that you should actually even put out in the first place so when i hear that when i see that it saddens my heart so I, i'm really really happy that you mentioned that even when families are going through things like that yeah. it should not even come out as an example in church it should not mm. Sad. Oh, okay, thank you. Let me let me let me um say something a little about that. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll, um, I'll more importantly, okay. uh, marital issues are sensitive issues, and um, hmm. it it a, a pastor needs a lot of wealth of experience to handle it, or else he will just be finding hmm. himself in problems. Hmm. You know, with with couples involved. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm trying to say? The plain truth is that it might almost be possible for any pastor, quote me anywhere, it mm -hmm. might almost be impossible for any pastor to be effective without citing instances, circumstances, or stories. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It should be done with highest level of of, it should be done with highest level of uh, uh, sensitivity, you understand, and wisdom yes. to undo it. At times, you can cite a story not when it is fresh, probably mm -hmm. two years, three years after it is gone, you understand. Mm -hmm. And at times, you could even seek the count. I mean, the the, the counsel of your yeah, the consent rather, yeah, you know, to let them know that I, I want to share your story. Would mm -hmm. you? Even though I will not make mention of names, mm -hmm. you understand, is um. Uh, I joy I'm seeing something you are writing there. So probably, 
uh, and no should help us read it out. Sometimes the minister discusses with close contact within the ministry. Consequently, those inner circle deacons, leaders, or elders divulge the information. Leader God bless you, sir. Divulge the information. That's another problem. Thank you, mm. Ajoyo, for saying that. Mm. And that is the reason why it is very, very important. It is very, very important who are your allies or people that you are mm. putting as pastors in sensitive positions in mm. church. Are they mm. people that are mature enough to handle sensitive um, mm. information that are sensitive? Mm. You know? So I, I believe so strongly that it's, it's the way you... The, 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 the pastors are doing a lot mm. in fixing things in our society. That's just the plain truth. We cannot run away. We cannot deny that fact. But a lot of pastors are immature. That's just the plain truth. Mm. They are immature in the way they handle things. They are mm. immature in the way mm. they handle things. Mm. Because for me, because the plain truth is that if you read the Bible, you discover that Bible has to do with stories of people too. Yes. And if those people were to be alive yeah. today, would they be happy that we are sharing their stories? <laughs> and for somebody actually, yeah, that's just a place to somebody, somebody actually, somebody actually had to journal down their story. Hmm. Now, if anybody finds me journaling down their story today, I could be sued. Mm. Do you understand what I'm trying to say now? I could be mm. so that. Why are you journaling that without my consent and all that? A majority of people in the Bible today, probably, they are not even, they don't even, <laughs> you know, that uh, they have chronicled right. down their stories and for lessons for others. Mm. Is that what? Mm. As a probably, they, they will not see so, that a privacy issue because, like, yeah, probably Jesus. It's like a the, some some I even feel cool about it. Like it's like a storyline. My life is a movie kind of thing. So I think some yes. are <laughs> yes. In fact, so I think in the heat of the situation, literally, I've been trying to like. I think in the heat of okay. the situation, like you said, in the heat of the situation, or if it's in the same church, yes. or it's in the same circle of people, I think it is. Yeah absolute discretion in when information is shared mm -hmm. even as parents right. as fathers and that's what the responsibility is if your child sees that once i tell you something you always spill it out to everybody they will never trust you as a father to handle that information yeah. ever again yeah 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 that's it that's it that's that's my that's my take about it though so, That's like you said, the first, <laughs> we have, got, the we have first gone thing, into ministry a little. Yeah, well, I, I, I think that spiritual fathers are important too. Like, if you look at the essence of father, oh, spiritual yeah. fathers are important. But, sir, I, 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 I know you're, you're, you're still talking about the abuse, like men getting abused at home. But with the spiritual yes. fathers, I have this, this um, question about it. So, when you have spiritual fathers, I understand that they're to help yeah. you, guide you, correct you when you're wrong, um, and whatnot. Yeah. But when okay. spiritual fathers begin to take the role of, I will use the word God, I, I see there's yeah. a problem. When spiritual okay. fathers become your go-to for everything without consulting God, I believe it's a problem. When the only thing you quote is your spiritual father without knowing what the word of God is saying, I believe there's a problem. problem. And we see this happen in this generation where people quote their pastors than even the word of God. I'm sorry, Ajay, I have to shake that table. I have to. I believe that children of God, we should know <laughs> Let the us shake the table, so. <laughs> we, we should know the content of what the word of God is saying. And one part of the examples that happens is, let's yeah. imagine this young man wants to get married. I remember there was a story that someone wanted to get married. And as a spiritual father, you had to, okay, who is yeah. this person? What does this person do? And the reason why um, it is important for direction, but also you yourself has to already have that relationship with God. But we say that it's the other way around. Okay. That, oh, Pastor John is my spiritual father. Once he says, this is Brother Taiwo, this is Brother Taiwo, there is no other this. What is God yeah. saying? So I feel like a lot of, even when it comes to giving too, there is this fear you put in people's hearts than the essence of giving unto God, their father. So as, as a spiritual father to okay. people, 
how do you make sure that this person is growing in the word and not just quoting Pastor John everywhere as a spiritual father? Thank you for using Pastor John as an example. <laughs> And uh, you know fully well that Pastor John is not, is not that kind of pastor. <laughs> Praise God. So that people will not be thinking that, oh, is it out of experience that he's asking this question? <laughs> Thank you. Now, it's a very good question. Mm. You know, unfortunately, we have a lot of charlatans in ministry today. Mm. And um, for the, what this way, I try to create the balance that for the fact that you, in every profession, you always have quacks. You have quack doctors, I'm trying to say. Hmm. But hmm. that does not make every doctor a quack. You understand what I'm trying to say now? So, uh, you have quack architects, a quack. You understand I can what I'm testify to say? The same way with me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm just I am 200% sure. Don't worry. Mm. Me and you have met in that space, yeah. that junction. That kind of pastor <laughs> Thank you, Ajoy. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, the plain truth is this. We, 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 the, a lot of people going to church, they are lazy to study the word on their own. Mm. And that is the reason, or to know what the word is saying, that is the reason why a lot of, a lot of pastors would take them for a ride. You understand that hmm. um, they have to they have to hero worship their pastor or try to seek their pastor uh, for everything, everything, everything. They don't even want to like Holy Spirit. What are you saying? By the grace of God, I operate in the office of a prophet, hmm. and I believe so strongly. The Bible says in Ephesians four that he, he when he ascended on high, he gave gifts unto men, and he gave, that is where the Bible uh, stated. The fivefold ministry, even mm. though the Bible didn't call it fivefold, mm. the one that coined out that word fivefold, but mm. it said it gives some to be apostles, it gives some to be prophets, it gives some to be pastors, to be teachers, and, and evangelists. You understand? Mm. So yes. those are the gifts in the body of Christ, and they have a place to fix in our lives. That's just the plain truth. And mm. but what, for me, if this is what I tell people, by the grace of God, I operate in the office of a prophet, and Yes, I'm a prophetic teacher. I teach, and by the grace of God, I operate in the in the uh, as a uh, as a prophet seer. Um, but this is the balance I try to create with people. That as a child of God, what I'm telling you should validate, should authenticate, and, and affirm from God. the leading of the Spirit. What the Lord has told you, Woo! it shouldn't bring confusion. Woo! You understand? So oh. it should be like. Uh, uh, a, a witness, a confirmation. You understand? Yeah. So that you are not confused. Like, okay, mm -hmm. I didn't tell Pastor about this. I didn't tell Pastor about this. Mm -hmm. And then he told me about it. Mm -hmm. You understand? Trying to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Confirmation, people. Your pastor doesn't have the final say. Your pastor just confirms you what you already have in your oh, spirit. You don't. Mm -hmm. Is that what? No. I... Yo, we didn't we didn't hear you, so I was just oh, can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Okay. So what I was saying initially was that what God is telling a man of God to tell you as a believer, if you are not a baby Christian, mm. should validate what the Spirit of the Lord has told you. Mm. So but that does not for the fact that but another 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 problem we are having is that because of what is happening, more importantly in the prophetic ministry which has mm. been abused. Mm. Now, it has come to the level whereby people undermine the ministry of the prophet. No, mm. I don't think it is, it is, it is right that way. We need mm. to, for the fact that we have charlatans in more importantly in that ministry, mm. the ministry of the prophet, that mm. does not mean we don't have genuines. Mm. The, the, the genuine prophets, that the people mm. that are actually called into that office, mm. we have them. Mm. We cannot deny them to, to, to exalt, to edify. And then to bring the church into the full stature, into to you know to be perfect, yeah. as the Bible uh, 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 dictates, you know. So mm. I believe that you need to to seek the word of God. You need to 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 be able to to fellowship, to have a relationship with God mm. as a Christian. 
on your mm. own. Mm. Then you can seek counsel and guidance from your pastor. Mm. You understand what I'm trying to say? And to mm. validate what you think the Lord is telling you or what you feel like you are being led by the Spirit of God to do. True. You understand trying to say not yes, just feel like um um you know on pastor to do everything for you. Mm. You understand trying to say yes, so thank you for that is that, that is that is that yeah. I like that I like that answer perfectly so <laughs> I'm so excited because it is something that has been on my heart for a very long time and I always love to say it that Whatever okay. my pastor is bringing to the table should just be the icing on the cake that I and God has already baked. Like it should not oh, be yeah. that I'm saying, oh, what what's what my pastor saying? What my pastor feel? You know, what is God feeling about it? What is God saying yep. about that situation? Which is more important yeah. than just yeah. just what, what what a man says. So, like you said, I, yeah. I, I love what you said. First, if a man is in an abusive marriage, you should first even run out of that place. Yep. Leave that environment, that abusive environment, just like it. But yeah. How do we get help for those men is my own concern. Yes, the men or the women can get out. We have already um, places where they help women out. How do we help men out that they can even open up to say, pastor or brother or friend, I am going through this thing. I need help. Because the men feel like because they are strong, their ego will never allow them to open their mouth to say, I am yeah. this, 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 I am that, that, that. So how yeah. do we get that help that is needed for these men? Yeah, I think you have, you've, you've said something that is very key, you know, uh, because of our, our makeup, we, we have the tendency to, the ego, yeah, we have the tendency to say that uh, I can handle it, I can handle mm -hmm. it, why, uh, you know, uh, that, <laughs> that, sense of, that sense of masculinity, mm -hmm. you know, would just want us to feel like, why should, they, they, would, they would see me as a weakling. If I if I have that this is what I'm I'm going through, they will see me as being fair. So, mm. so they, we want to keep things to ourselves. But I believe so strongly that in our world today, ties of things are changing. Mm. And so, if anybody, number one, uh, you know, in some twenty years ago, things that are happening now in the women's world were not there. But it has to do with awareness and women arising that, no, 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 no. We need to come together and, and strengthen life. ourselves. Life, things should not remain the same. And yeah. I believe the same thing should happen to men. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, and I believe that even to me, myself, is a clarion call that we need to start doing something as hmm. a ministry hmm. to handle uh, men that are in abusive relationships and all that. Yeah. And even young men, boys that are in abusive yeah. relationships. And God will help us. Mm. You understand? And those, mm. those people that are there, uh, fathers that are there, I believe so strongly that they should start something too to handle mm. such. Because it's mm. not, we have not been seeing such in ministry, you know. Mm. But I believe, uh, like you've said, and um, uh, things will start happening. Amen. By the grace Amen. of God. <laughs> so how, how important, like we've, we've been ch talking about this, and we talk about like our heavenly father, our earthly father, we talk about spiritual fathers, now I want to talk about the importance of mentorship. Now, yeah. we have a lot of mentors out there and we have more women sliding into, oh, I want to be mentored, I want to be this. But you, you see just very few guys that get mentored by people. You see very few people that get mentored and get um, that, that um, work done in the real sense of it. They believe that my friends will always help me or my friend can always do this for me. So how important is mentorship when it comes to grooming a man and making the man a better version of himself? Okay. Sorry, the, the line just... Um was bad the other time let me, let me repeat that question a little the last phrase so how important is mentorship when it comes to men and All women right. of our um, age there is the, the the place the place of mentorship or mentoring or mentors cannot be overemphasized hmm. for men hmm. you understand trying to say Yes, and then um, in our world where we have um, uh, things are quite faster now, hmm. you know, you see a lot of 
um, a lot of young men at 23, 22, 23, 25, they're having PhD. Mm. 21, they want to get married. In those days, it is just once in a while that we, you will see something of such. You understand? Trying to say like a 21 year old boy wants to mar get married, probably one out of a thousand. But these days, 22, 23, they are men in their thousands that are ready to, I mean, actually ready. They are ready financially, ready everywhere. But mm. you still know that within them, they are not really, really ready. Mm. They are not, apart from having a good job, having a, a nice ride, you know that they, they, there's a high level of immaturity. Mm. What they thought they are mature about is not what life is all about. So mm. there is a need for, for mentoring. But mm. at times, people misconstrue what mentoring is all about. Mm. A lot of people, once they want you to mentor them, they believe that mentoring uh, to, to have a mentor is to choke that mentor, to choke life oxygen out of him, mm. which is not it. Mm. You understand? Uh, your mentor is meant to groom you and put you mm. in an environment whereby you can grow. Mm. You understand? Not necessarily providing anything for you. Mm. But a lot of people say that one, I mean, a lot of people think that once you are saying that I'm your, you are my mentor, I'm your protege, you mm. should provide everything. Mm. Sure. And such things could discourage. You know, it, it could be quite discouraging, you know. So mm. if I, I believe that, number one, you, you need to get mentors that are spiritual, that are spiritually <laughs> sound. And then mm. you need to get mentors that have the same value system that you had had to or mm. that you want to be known for. You understand what I'm trying Better to say? Off with. You need to, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And then you need to have mentors in your line or your path of destiny, probably mm. in your career path and all that, mm. uh, probably if you're in ministry, you need mm. to have mentors in those areas. You need to have mentors um, in marital or family life. You mm. understand? Because yes. a lot of people, they, they, so you could have a mentor that is doing well career-wise, mm. but is 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 marital destiny is in jeopardy. Mm. You understand? Is yes, and if you said because he's a very wonderful mentor in your business or in career, and then you want to follow his is, uh, is, is family life pattern, then you just know that you, you, have, you, you, you just set up yourself for trouble. Hmm. You understand what I'm trying to say? So there's no, no, no reason for sentiment. If you know that this person is good at this area, is not good at the other area, don't put sentiment there. Just try to, to allow him to mentor in the area where he has strength. Hmm. You understand what I'm trying to say? Hmm. So and hmm. I believe so strongly that um, the awareness is out there that one uh, being a success is not all, all, all about in fact it's not it's nothing about what you acquire it's nothing mm. about your possession but lies you are able to impact that awareness mm. is becoming mm. stronger so mm. people are getting mm. aware to impact lives mm. you understand what i'm trying to say now people are yes, getting uh, aware to impact lives looking for younger generation to mentor so mm. and i believe people we have a lot of people with a uh, genuine intention Mm. Looking for younger generation to mentor, looking for, and then uh, and let me let me try to put a caveat here because I've been mentioning younger generation. It does not necessarily mm. mean that the, it is the older generation that mentor the younger generation or that mentors the younger generation. No, it could be the other way around. You understand? Mm. Trying to say a younger generation can mentor a older generation. That's just a plain truth. Mm. Because mm. if you know that the person person has something you don't have, just just be humble enough. Okay, come here. Just, uh, I this. just need you. How are you doing this? <laughs> you know, so that we won't just allow ego or arrogance to just mm. uh, sabotage mm. your, your, your destiny. You mm. know? So can I ask, what are the responsibilities of a father? Like standard ones. And right. what should a lady look out for when um, she gets to meet a brother and she's like, oh, uh, they that so what are you think she should box that okay this is there check 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 what 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 is the response okay the first, Hello? The, father, the first the first question is what are the responsibilities of a father while the second one is okay. what are the things to put in check when you meet a brother that is interested in a sister what are the things you should you should check check okay check. okay I will, I will, uh, the, my answers uh, are going to be predicated on the word of God because I'm a, prim okay. I'm primarily, I'm a pastor, you know, um, okay. I'm, I'm consciously saying this because of uh, 
different kind of audience we are having on this uh, platform. You mm. know? Uh, number one, responsibilities of a father. I will say it in one um, form, and it will, you know, it it will be all encompassing. Um, okay. You know, just like we talk about the the the, the when, when we talk about the fruit of the spirit. Okay, mm. we have mm. only one fruit of the spirit, which is love. Yeah. And it is in love you have every other fruit. Yeah. Now, I'm going to answer that question with that thing. Somebody said, the greatest gift I could give my children is to love their mother. No, we, we can hear you without even putting it up. We can hear you clearly. All right. Yeah, perfect. All right. So, it says, the greatest gift I could give my children is to love their mother. Hmm. And um, mm. to me, I try to uh, dissect that statement and I discover it's key. You know, mm. if you love their mother very well, you will provide for them. Mm. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? If you love their mother very well, it's not the love of trying to kiss and doing all those romantic stuff. You understand? So if you love their mother very well, you want them to turn out well in life as your mm. children. Mm. You understand? If you love mm. their mother very well, you mm. want to be the ideal father. Mm. That's just a plain truth. That you don't want your children to live to understand that daddy has this terrible habit or attitude. Mm. You know? So you want to live right if you mm. love their mother very well. And mm. then uh, <laughs> after everything is said and done, they can say we are proud of our dad. Mm. He's a true father. Mm. He's an ideal father. Hmm. You understand what I'm trying to say? So I want to put it in that form that if you, you need to love your wife, when you love your wife, you want to make life comfortable for her. You want hmm. to be an ideal husband to her and an hmm. ideal father to her children. Hmm. And then so that she can boldly say, the greatest gift that ever happened to me after my salvation is your father. Hmm. When she's telling the, I mean, your children. You understand what I'm trying to say? Hmm. You know, I could remember after my my... my my late dad passed on, and my mom was mm. saying a lot of things about him. Mm. And, uh, I, 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 and I discovered that actually this man lived well because mm. he loved uh, Your mom. his wife, mm. my mother. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So mm. then the second question um, about what are the uh, things to look out for yeah. in, a, in a brother? Mm. Okay. That when you, a brother is trying to ask you how, um, mm. number one, thank you for that comment. Zed is talking the truth. Thank <laughs> you. My, All right. <laughs> okay. How are you, mommy? Mm. <laughs> All right. Now, things you need to look out for. Um, as a lady in trying to look, uh, uh, I mean, a guy is, is checking out on you that, okay, and then you're like, okay, this guy is in love, but actually, is it real love or something? Can I actually mm. settle down for me? What are the, the hidden signals, the hidden signs mm. that, that could actually reveal the, the true identity of this guy? Mm -hmm. Number one, I think it has to do with his spirituality. Mm. That's just a plain truth. Because the Bible says, what shall it profit a man that he gains this whole world and he loses his whole world? So mm -hmm. do, you, I, do, you, do, do you share the same spiritual genealogy? In other words, is he mm -hmm. a believer? Is he a Christian? Does he believe? Does he not, it's not just about believing. Now, let me balance it. Does he love the Lord? Because mm -hmm. we have believers. Even the Bible says demons are believers. The Bible says demons believe and they tremble. So it's not just mere believers. A lot of people believe in Christ, but they don't love him. Mm. You understand? So you really need to establish the fact of that spiritual genealogy. Are you a lover of Christ first before you fall in love with me? Mm. So, mm -hmm. and another thing I need to tell uh, 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 young ladies, truth be told, it might, it might, it might sound somehow, you know, I, 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 I tell every lady that I'm privileged to pastor that are single, I tell them something. I said, two people Two people are the most important people in your life as a single lady. Number one, your parents. Number two, your pastor. Hmm. He said, and I, I will always tell them, if the person you are dating is telling you that is 
or you're tr trying to say a lot of things about your parent and it tries to trivialize your parent. Don't take it lightly, you. Sir. Don't, mm. don't take it lightly because <laughs> if you <laughs> don't take it lightly, it's or probably you are just kid. saying <laughs> something that bodies. <laughs> but, uh, yes. You said what? I'm trying to hold you. I was trying to hold this together, but sir, this is the truth. Like, continue, sir. All right. So, mm -hmm. and then if anybody is, um, you know, I, I've I've been privileged to pastor a lot of single ladies, and then um, once they're in a relationship, I said, ah, so how's the person? Because the Bible says, as a shepherd, you need to know the true state of your flock. Mm. and their relationship inclusive. So it's not just when you have bad dreams that you know that you need to come to your pastor, that they are pursuing you in your dreams. Mm. There's a, the business is moving forward and looks like somebody is blocking your, your fortune. <laughs> Say, oh, where's my pastor? <laughs> no, even in every in your relationship. Mm. You don't understand? And mm. then I don't understand. You, you want to be so free with your pastor, with every other thing. But when mm. it comes to your relationship, you just feel like, ah, we can undo ourselves. Mm -hmm. No, it's beyond that. Mm. So if, if you are if you are going through a relationship and then the 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 you tell the person that well thank God that I met you and everything looks fine that could you meet my pastor and the person try to you know mm. you look <laughs> run away. Marriage, but it. And over time that I've been pastoring, that I've been sharing this experience, hmm. Hmm. a deaf ear to hit. At hmm. least I've, I've countless numbers of them, you know. And then they were just like, I said, well, it's, it was, I believe that God can still change the person. That's what I just advised. Hmm. And let's keep praying. You understand what I'm trying to say? Hmm. So I won't, I, I won't, I won't, once there's no issue of battery and all that. So I'm not going to be an advocate that you should leave your marriage. Unless there's the issue of uh, battery and all that. Mm. So, two people, your parents, mm. or probably your siblings, you know, and then you don't let any man, or, you know, talk down on your siblings. And I don't let any man, if you are a true mm. child of God, as a lady, don't let any man, and you know mm. you, are, you are going to a, a Bible-believing church, and you know that your pastor is genuine enough, you know, don't let any guy mm. talk down on him. I believe so strongly. Mm. At least try to pay, because it provides the uh, spiritual oversight. Hmm. Hmm. Those two uh, things are, 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 hmm. are key. They're very key. Um, what, one of the things I wanted to add to that is that he himself has to have a pastor. It is very, very important if you're if you're in a relationship with, with a Christ, yeah. the child of God, as a sister, the, one of the very important things you must know is who is his pastor, who is the person that he who wants is his to, he talks to, yeah. is mentored by, because yeah. it is very, very important yeah. to see a lot of great men out there, great men of God, and when, both of them will say, my mentor is this, this, my mentor is that, that. They have passions. Yeah. Yeah. And it is very important as a lady, whoever you are in a relationship with or you are having a prospect for has to have a pastor is accountable to. Not that you are trying to like report in but is responsible to somebody that you can say, oh, this person is tied to so, so, and so. And it's not like everything yeah. that happens in his life is tied to the pastor or he has to consult the pastor. But you know that is his father, he respects his family, and also he has, which is very important. Oh, my God. I have so many other questions in my yeah. head, but... Time cannot permit me to continue. But one thing I always love to do when we're wrapping up the show, we have just like eight minutes to the end of the show. But one very important thing I always love my guests to do and is to pray for um for us and pray for like whatever situation and topic is talking about men out there. The things I want you to pray for is that 
becoming better versions of themselves, men understanding purpose. But before you pray, I want you to like give us a like a nugget, a wrap up um word before you go. And when you're done, um, just a prayer for for men out there becoming better versions of themselves, understanding the purpose why God created them, and becoming better fathers out there so that our world can become a better place and our women can understand. Um, what love really means between a, a, a husband, a wife, or a father and a daughter, and all that. Okay. Um, okay, to just have a word of prayer to pray for men out there so that yes. they will understand their essence, others, and um, for our women to, to understand what the line is breaking. Yes, um, I want you to give us like so a the last word for for like for the end of the show, like a, a word to hold on to. Then you pray for all our men out there. All right, um, to the men out there, I would like to say that fatherhood is God's idea. Hmm. Aspire and him at becoming better fathers. Mm. Even if you had a terrible childhood experience with your own father, just resolve within your mind by the grace of God that you will turn out <laughs> well and that your mm. children will be proud of you. And mm. I believe that um, when we have better men, we have a better world. I believe so strongly that once fathers <laughs> could fix you know, fix things from the from the home front. We mm. have a better society to live in. Mm. So um, it is very key that we need to live as men and as fathers. We need to be, I mean, to live a responsible life. And mm. God, we help us in Jesus' name. Amen. God, we help us in Jesus' name. Amen. And um, I I pray for our world, that God will heal our world. Amen. Because the world over is going through. Mm. Uh, we are in Nigeria today. A lot of things uh, are going on in our country. But mm. it's not just a Nigerian issue. Mm. The whole world mm. is having an issue. Mm. The whole world. I pray mm. the Lord will heal our world. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray peace in our word in the name Amen. of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray that God we heal for every heart that is hurting, whether a man mm. or a woman, that mm. Lord we heal your heart Amen. in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. For every home that is dysfunctional, mm. I pray that the Lord we heal every wisdom Amen. to live right. Amen. is impacted in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And I pray for everyone, mm. everyone that is experiencing a loss, mm. experiencing the pain of loss mm. right now, God will heal you Amen. in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Amen. I decree, even as you are watching this program, where your life needs to be fixed, God will fix you. In Amen. the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will turn Amen. out well in Jesus' Amen. mighty name. And I pray for you, I know too, as the Lord is using you to touch lives, to turn around lives around the world, mm -hmm. God will be with you. Amen. God will establish your destiny further. In the Amen. name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. there will never be a better yesterday for you. Amen. You will be moving from one level of glory to another. In the Amen. name of the Lord Jesus, underneath Amen. you are the everlasting Hands in the name of Jesus, God Amen. will shield you with His glory Amen. in Jesus' precious name. Father, we thank you. Thank we you. bless your holy name Amen. in Jesus' mighty name. We pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, sir. We appreciate you. We celebrate you. And I pray that your You're life continue to be a great example for others. Your marriage will continue to be Amen. a blessing. Amen. The children will become great Amen. and greater men and women that will be greater than you in Jesus' name. Amen. And we pray that Amen. even though people might not understand, like people might not understand what they're be because they are going through different patches of 
different struggles of life right now but pray they become better men and so that they can fulfill purpose and Amen. understand why God created them. And I pray that God's purpose for your life will Amen. be fulfilled and you will not miss it in Jesus' name. Thank you very much, Pastor Amen. John. We You're appreciate welcome. you. We celebrate you. Um, I will pray You're that welcome. the vibrant church will grow from glory to glory and from strength to strength in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. So, so much. Day. Yes, sir. Well, love to your family. Yes, people. Yes, yes. We've come to the end of the show. Yes, I don't want to go to, but yeah, we have to go. Yes, yes, yes. We have to go. But what did we learn today? We learned a lot. Make sure you have a pastor. Make sure you have a mentor. Make sure that you love your family. Make sure you respect your family. Make sure that even when you're going through things as a man, you should reach out to people that can help you. Make sure that as a sister, when you're looking at the ticks, you make sure he loves the Lord and not just be a believer, but he loves the Lord. He loves the work of the Lord. And also he has a pastor he's accountable with. Make sure that as a man, whatever it is you want, your daughters or your sons, to look out for is how you treat their mother so please be a better father and if you want mentorship you can also get mentors there are so many books that you can they can watch you can read books by miles Moore. you can read books by td jakes you can read books by sam adeyemi there's so many great mentors out there that are helping people realize and fulfill purpose so as we wrap up the show today i pray that the grace and the mercy of god will de not depart from you i pray that god will continue to help you to become a better man a better woman of purpose and you continue to fulfill destiny and like i always say please 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 you should make sure that you draw your heart close to god god is the best is the good good father he'll never leave us nor forsake us so continue to enjoy that relationship when you continue to speak to your father you continue to hear his voice and when you continue to hear his voice you begin to understand and can hear it even in the midst of a storm so you do not say oh i had something in my spirit no because you have that continuous and loving relationship with your father our lord our god you'll be able to know when he's speaking to you so please Please, please, please make sure that you have that continuous relationship with the Lord and God will bless you. Fathers out there, God bless you and God will continue to give you the power to become better fathers and better husbands to your wives in Jesus' name. Now, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Anua Dediri. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook at Life Matters with Anua Dediri. Um, subscribe to our um, Instagram at Life Matters with Anu Adidiri. And also, you can also watch um, a replay. So if you want to watch a replay, please share the video. Let your friends, let your friends watch this. Let your, 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 even your enemies, let them watch this. So they understand what it means to be a better father. And to also, in this world, let's, let's hope that they, they enjoy it.